Welcome to Write With Love. I'm Sarah Williams, best-selling author, speaker, and creative entrepreneur. Each week, I chat to passionate and inspiring authors about their journey in creative writing. Some are traditionally published, some do it themselves. Everyone's journey is different, and everyone has something interesting to say. We all love love and love what we do. Today's show is brought to you by our amazing fans and supporters on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the show and get some awesome bonus episodes, go to patreon.com slash Sarah Williams author to learn more. Now here's today's show. G'day, I'm Sarah Williams, romance author and independent publisher at Serenade Publishing. Today I'm chatting to the author of Three Gold Coins, Josephine Moon. Thanks for coming on the show, Josephine. Thanks so much for having me. Excellent. So I'm really excited about your new novel, Three Gold Coins. It's just been released and so far it's getting some really great reviews. So tell us about how you got started and your writing journey so far. I think I was always a writer and I think like all writers, I became a writer because I was a reader first and um, I think as many Female writers say Ina Blyton was the uh, the one that kept me awake at night, devouring all of her books. And I certainly wrote my first book at age nine called Starlight the Brumby because I was obsessed with the Silver Brumby series at that point. And so I acted the whole thing out in the backyard and then wrote it down. And then my dad took it to work and his secretary typed it up and everything, which was pretty cool. <laughs> Um, I did what I thought was sensible and studied journalism at school. Um and then, but then I went on to teach, and I think it was my first year teaching, so it was 1999, I went to a workshop with Queensland Writers' Centre, and I just had this, this light bulb moment of just going, this is it, this is absolutely what I want to do, I want to be a career author, and so from then on I started writing, I got a, a writing buddy very quickly, and we wrote short stories and met every month and could teach each other stories, and I did that for years, uh, really, and Eventually, I wrote um, 10 manuscripts in 12 years, and the 10th one was The Tea Chest, which finally got picked up. And I think, for me, I was writing across a whole heap of genres. I didn't really know where I fit on the shelf. And so I finally worked that out and, and wrote The Tea Chest, and then that worked for me. So, yeah, there's a lot of rejections, a lot of tears, but, um, you know, we got there. <laughs> Excellent. So your books to date, so you've got The Tea Chest was first. What came next? The Chocolate Promise yep. and The Beekeeper's Secret and now Three Gold Coins. Brilliant. And they're based in Australia or I have a little bit of Australian in them? So uh, they, they all have some element of Australia. So The Tea Chest is set across Brisbane and London. Um, the Chocolate Promise is set in Evandale in Tasmania and some in Paris and Provence. Uh, the Beekeeper's Secret is set entirely on the Sunshine Coast, a little bit in Brisbane. That was absolutely a love story to the Sunshine Coast, that book, because it had been my dream. I'm a busy girl, Brisbane girl, but I uh, wanted to live up here sort of my whole life and finally got here and was just just loving the Sunshine Coast lifestyle. So it was definitely a <laughs> definitely <laughs> love letter to the hinterland. Um, and Three Gold Coins is set between Brisbane and Tuscany. Excellent. Oh, that sounds brilliant. So I'm in Mullaney in the Sunshine Coast hinterland and you're in Noosa hinterland. So we're close. Yeah. but haven't met in person yet. <laughs> yeah. So that's I'm so hanging out the next week on holidays, actually. Oh, so brilliant. Yeah, we... Come and say hi. <laughs> so um, tea and chocolate, you've got a bit of a, a sweetness for those. Any particular brands that you love? Uh, do you know, I for tea, I'm... I'm a big chai fan. I just love my chai. And uh, if anyone's read the tea chest, you know I talk a lot about chai in the tea chest, or my, my character, Kate does, um, because chai is so different everywhere you go. Because chai just means tea blend, so it can mean anything, really. Yep. <laughs> so I do love discovering new chais. Um, and I do have a absolutely favorite one at the moment of course its name's just popped in my head. it's a, it's done up in the in the hinterland near you guys it's um uh it's the the Montville oh, one it's the chai coat it's they, they soak it in honey and um so it's all fresh spices and they dry it in honey and so when you put it in it just oh it's divine oh excellent Have to 
brand for you. I'm drinking it now, actually. <laughs> Excellent. We will link to that. <laughs> <In the notes. laughs> Excellent. So I was looking over your website and I saw that you do some charity work with Story Dogs. Tell us about that. Yeah, so Story Dogs is an organisation I came across years ago um, when I'd heard about reading dogs in America. So they go in and they take volunteers, take dogs into schools and they read with kids in school. And um, I looked for one in Australia and came up with Story Dogs. And at the time I was thinking about volunteering with my dog, Daisy, and then it was Golden Retriever, um, who we just lost about six weeks ago. Um, but she, and that was, I thought, oh, she's, she's never going to pass the behaviour test, you know. She's so just unruly and <laughs> such a clown. Um, so I didn't do it. And then my son started prep this year and um, for some reason I thought about Story Dogs again and I went and had a look and, yeah, and you can sponsor them. And so I sponsor a dog on the Sunshine Coast. Um, all the money's pooled across Australia so that they can send people wherever they need to go. But, you know, I have a, a representative in uh, the Sunshine Coast. So, yeah, I'm really proud of that. And I just, you know, anything, you know, I was a teacher and I love animals and I'm a writer, so it just sort of ticks all my love boxes, really. So you literally take a dog into school? I don't. I sponsor somebody. I sponsor uh, story dogs to have a volunteer go in. So they do, they go into year two's, year two classes in that sort of learning to read phase and you know, kids read to the dogs and <laughs> it just helps them build confidence in their reading. That's a really unique idea. I haven't heard of that. Yeah, it's beautiful. Well, that's so cool. Um, so obviously you have a love of animals and you mentioned um, the silver brumby in your story before. Um, so talk to us about your horses and, and animals and that sort of thing. Yeah, I've been a, a tragic animal lover since I was very tiny and um, we have at the moment, I think, 20 animals. We've got horses, goats, chickens, cats, dogs and fish. Yeah. I was resisting the fish when my son begged the fish <laughs> the night before he started prep and we were like, oh, man, we can't say no now. <laughs> yeah, of course we can. Um, so now we have fish as well. Um, yeah, so we, I just... They're, yeah, they're a big, big part of it. They're our family. They're yeah. Just, yeah, fairy children. <laughs> and you founded a horse rescue charity a few years ago? Yeah, I did. I, I went spontaneously to um, a dogger sale, which are horse sales where primarily horses have been discarded and what they call the dogger, the man who buys them for pet meat, mm. is there to buy them. And so you can bid against the dogger. And I spontaneously rescued four horses. I already had three of my own, so I don't know where you know what I was going to do with them. And then, um, and I just was struck. Lincoln, um, when I I did, I'd accidentally bought Lincoln this black horse. I couldn't see him over the crowd, and I thought I was bidding on a pony next to him, and I'd actually bought him. And when I finally got to see him, sort of an hour later, because I just sort of had to move on with the crowd. Um, I just stopped dead. I couldn't believe it. He was so thin. I'd never seen a horse in that condition before and, and he was so frightened. And I went in the yard with him and he just dropped his head and, and he just rested his head on, on my chest and I was just like, oh, man, that's that's it. You know, <laughs> I'm sunk for good. And so it was just such a – it was one of those things where you, once you've seen what you've seen, you can't unsee it. And so I just sort of had to take some action. So, yeah, so I did that basically full time for three years. Yeah, and now I have a paddock full of – that's it exactly brilliant so we've had Vanessa Carnavale on the show before and talking about one of her retreats that she did in Italy and I hear you were actually one of those participants I was there that's absolutely where three gold coins came from I'd been working on a manuscript that wasn't working for me and I went there kind of in the hope that I would break through something and fix this manuscript and instead I decided to toss the whole lot and start again and so my first day in Rome I'd seen this elderly man in the street in sort of cobblestone street around the Trevi Fountain and I just was really struck by him and just what are you doing here he was really frail and struggling and I just was so captured and I took a photo of him and then sort of put it away and then a week or so later we were all sitting on Vanessa's retreat under the trees in the Tuscan Valley you know just looking at all this unbelievable scenery around us and um yeah just the group was there and I was so struggling with the book and Vanessa said look why don't you just give yourself permission to just let it go for a few days you know to see what else comes up and 
my sister who'd been with me said, oh, the, the, the man, the old man in Rome. And I was like, yeah. And everyone went, ooh, the old man. And so that's just kind of where it started it was um, with this this image I had of this elderly man in Rome. And it went on from there. So, yeah, then I just um, soaked up everything I could as fast as I could in the time I had left and somehow got it all into the book. <laughs> so it was beautiful. And how long did it take you to write three gold coins in? It was a big book. It was, it was um, you know, writers often say that books are like children and they're all different and some of them are really great, some of them are really difficult. <laughs> Three Gold Coins was really difficult. It was my most challenging book. Mm-hmm. So if I, if I count where I'd started with the 50,000 words that I threw away, then it, it was two years. Yeah, wow, two years. And it was three completely separate versions of it as well. Oh, <laughs> wow. Just, <laughs> really had enough there to have written sort of three totally different books. Yeah, excellent. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. That, that's big. definitely a labour of love for three years. Yeah, I remember really <laughs> had that one. Got a one. <laughs> and do you have any advice to new writers? Obviously, Perseverance being one of them. <laughs> Perseverance is one. Find yourself good writing, buddy. Absolutely. Um you know, I always like to say, people often say, you know, write what you write what you know. And I think that's a great place to start, though I prefer the next level on, which is write what you want to know, because I think that gives you, you know, that sense of curiosity and gives you that sort of forward momentum rather than sort of a backward stagnant momentum, although I already know this. It's sort of that really fresh, you're looking at it with really fresh eyes, so your writing takes on that freshness as well. Yeah, Absolutely. And you mentioned the Queensland Writers' Centre earlier. Um, do you do any workshops with them still or, or would you recommend them? Oh, absolutely. I, I don't attend any of them anymore, but so I, I went to so many QWC workshops over my sort of writing apprenticeship. It's, I did, and I did everything, you know. I went to playwriting and I went to poetry writing and I went to, I went to absolutely everything that was on offer because it was all skill building. I always took away something new and um, they're just great. It's just the really the perfect place to go. Yeah, yeah. We can definitely recommend. Um, I think every state in Australia has writers centres so at Queensland. I know South Australia and Victoria for sure. New South Wales I'm sure do. Um, so yeah, they can be a really great place for those aspiring authors. Um, yeah. I know I, I do talk a lot about romance writers of Australia cause that's one I'm very passionate about, but I love Queensland Writers Centre as well. Now I'm close. I can go to more workshops. It's great. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, too. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, they always pack up their, um, their schedule. So it's, it's really great. Um, yeah. so you've, you're on your book tour at the moment. How is that going? And have you had any funny incidents? <laughs> <laughs> um, so the book has only been out not even a week or it might be a week today so I haven't been that many places yet I'm, I'm trying to get around to you know uh, bookstores and libraries and see as many people as I can um, I was going to go down to Booktopia uh, a couple of weeks ago and do a, a whole big signing down there so that they had signed copies but had a bit of a crisis mid-air there where I had an ovarian cyst just burst mid, mid-flight and uh, <laughs> passed out and then vomited all the way to Sydney and it was really dry, big drama and I, so I didn't make it to Booktopia. Unfortunately, I didn't get to sign my books, which was really sad. <laughs> and I caused a lot of problems for people on the plan. Yeah. <laughs> this is also pretty sad. <laughs> so, yes, that hasn't happened to me before. That's new. That's a new tour experience. <laughs> you can read more about that on your blog. <laughs> that goes better than that, yeah. <laughs> so but hopefully that's the bad luck out of the way. Hopefully it's all good luck for now. That's it. And it's, you know, an experience you can write about. <laughs> exactly. That's a great thing about being a writer is nothing goes wasted, you know, even your worst days can can be useful somewhere down the track. It's all compost, you know, that's for it. later. Absolutely. Mm. So you're doing some book signings in the Sunshine Coast and, yes. uh, and in Brisbane as well? And in Brisbane, yeah, I'm brewing uh, something for Sydney and possibly Melbourne as well. Excellent. And and so what are you working on now, Josephine? So I'm working on my fifth book, which is um, set in Melbourne, actually. So uh, I would like to go back down to Melbourne and do a bit more research before I finish my next draft. Um, (laughs) Always a great excuse because I love Melbourne. It's beautiful. Um, So that's that's fun at the moment and it's going well it's a good book baby unlike three gold coins which was a really terrible book baby this one's been really good and really cooperative so pleased about that i don't know if i could have handled one another one as bad as the last one <laughs> I bet. yeah it's so, well. 
so any um any little insider information you can give us on this or is it a bit hush hush the plot's definitely hush hush at the moment uh and mostly because i i'm such a messy writer that things start in one place and just end up in a totally different place so i'd, ha- I'd hate to leave anyone down the garden path there but but my food theme because all my books have food themes you know running through them my food theme is on coffee Ooh, so coffee. <laughs> so Melbourne, obviously a great place to go for that exactly i was just gonna say yeah <laughs> to be <laughs> brilliant oh that is so exciting so i do love coffee and i'm looking forward to that one so absolutely well fantastic um journey so far josephine that is so exciting and i should definitely recommend that everyone get three gold coins and of course all your backlist and um so where can we find you online to find out where we can buy all your books you can face oh, my um my website is josephinemoon.com and you can find me on facebook and twitter i'm a pretty bad twitter person i have to say i'm sort of not great with that one instagram i'm also on instagram i love instagram there's a lot of photos of food and animals that end up on instagram um and then facebook sort of you know lots of some of my event information and that sort of thing all goes through facebook as well and i have a newsletter you can sign up to and I always put recipes in there and competitions as well so yeah lots of ways to find me yeah Oh, that is fantastic. Well, thank you so much for your time today, Josephine. That was great. No worries. Thanks so much for having me. Thanks for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed the show. Jump onto my website, sarahwilliamsauthor.com and join my mailing list to receive a free preview of my books and lots of inspiration. If you like the show and want it to continue, you can become a sponsor for just a couple of dollars a month. Go to patreon.com slash Sarah Williams author to find out more. And remember to follow me on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and leave a review of the podcast. I'll be back next week with another loved up episode. Bye.